So we arrived late last night in Ella. That was quite a, quite a drive. Oh, really hard. We hadn't booked a place and my Lord, it was difficult to find a place at a reasonable budget. Aimarked a couple of places, but um, when and they we had got really here, good reviews. They did, but wow, the, the the route to the actual places was horrendous. One of them, <laughs> it was like a climbing up a hill like this, but it wasn't like a nice. Uh, this is pretty steep, but this is, it wasn't a tarmac. It was gravel and 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 wet and slippy, and at one stage it was like uh, cobble, like yes. cobblestones, really hard, uh, really shiny, and we were slipping trying to get up this hill. And uh, when we did get up there, it, was, it wasn't a great place. No, so we did two or three places like that. And eventually we found this lovely, it's called the White House. Perfect, ideal for Michelle and I. Uh, we've just had our breakfast and we're gonna go and explore Ella. This is the road I had to go up last night. Now that's the good bit of the road. That's the good bit. And that is complete wreck next to a building site. On the other side of that building site is just unmade wet cobblestones. It's only just wide enough for the tuk-tuk and at some place it's just mud and slush. It was, when we got up there, I was getting concerned whether we'd even be able to turn around or whether I was going to have to reverse about 500 metres down a sort of a, a rock path. And that was a good place. <laughs> <laughs> Another place was way up in the mountains, just miles away from Ella. And again, the slopes were so steep that the tuk-tuk, we were in first gear pretty much all the way up, so it was hopeless. Ella reminds Michelle a little bit of Sapa and Uti from what we've seen. Now, for those of you that know the channel, you know what that, you know what that means. Straight off the bat, it's not that bad, but it's super touristic. Even last night as we drove through the town, there's so many um, European faces here. You can tell this is a, a, a real tourist town and a little bit hippie. A few hundred yards from our hotel, this is the main high street and it's got cafes and bars and nothing's closed. The curfew, it doesn't seem to have affected Ella. I don't think they even have the power cuts that we have over the rest of uh, Sri Lanka. I don't know if it's just a first impression, but look at the quality, the quality of the bananas and the mangoes here. So anyway, they've got mangoes, they're selling them per piece. Uh, but the papayas also look quite good. Got wood apples. What is this one? Like a wood apple. Wood apple? It's like a wood apple, is it? Uh, is it a young wood, young wood apple? Okay. Okay, they're selling the mangoes uh, per piece. So that's how, how much per piece? 80 rupees per piece. Okay, so that's not bad. Not it, too bad. No. I don't know how many would be, maybe Probably four in a kilo. I was thinking that, so, so that's, that's about one, two, three twenty. That's, 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 that's about right. Yeah. Hello. 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 Hello, how are you? Good. So pretty much everything up here is geared at tourists. I mean, this is, this is not a, a local community. Everything is touristic. Um, there's even a place we got some kotu from last night called Fish and Chips that does actually do... Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm talking about it. We're right next to it. So this is Fish and Chips restaurant. This is the guy that cooked my kotu yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. So, there are, there are some local eateries doing local uh, Sri Lankan food. Um, they also do westernized food, but they do some really nice uh, local food. And it's not as expensive as we thought. I mean, the, the, the prices are definitely geared at the Sri Lankan market. They're not like crazy expensive. I probably should qualify that. Uh, a chicken kotu from there was about 550 rupees. Now, outside of Colombo, chicken kotu can vary uh, in price greatly, but in Colombo, uh, chicken kotu was about 650, so a little bit less, a little, more, a little bit more expensive perhaps than regionally, but quite fair. Good on my sunnies, it's pretty bright. Now, one of the hotels that we came to was this Hotel Alta Vista. And I thought, well, the entrance is just here. I'll just go inside. It's got to be, it's got to be just here. But it's actually that, you see right up in the distance, that white building. And uh, 
it's, it's like that steep. I walked up there, was absolutely exhausted by the time I got to the top, just to find out they had no rooms. So we were happy to find the White House. It's a little small uh, family run business. And so far, I'd recommend it. So what is Ella all about? Taurus it would seem, eh? Almost every second person we meet is here on holiday. I've got to do a bit of research, Michelle, and find out, because I think there's some beautiful waterfalls. We saw one on the, on the drive up here, didn't we? We did. That's we gorgeous. Did. So that's what a lot of people come here to see, the waterfalls. Well, we've seen that tick. And <laughs> we drove past that in the rain last night. It's lovely and sunny up here, and it's, it's quite a bit cooler. And this place here does reasonably priced, fresh made food and drinks. Apparently, reasonably priced. We'll be the judge of that. Just ask permission if I can film in the shop, uh, make a little video. So it's quite nice for people to see. This is quite a modern looking supermarket. It's nice and cool in here. You've got a lot of Western products, your, your dairy milk, chocolate, uh, <laughs> stuff we recognize from Australia, but you'll also see, um, well, I was going to say you'll see some local produce. This is actually mainly imported produce. Some uh, toiletries here, a few more toiletries, crackers on this side. So it's always nice when you get permission to film all these different sweet crackers, which is the ones that we like, Michelle, the lemon puffs. They've got to be here. Them. I found them. They're, these lemon puffs, they're, they're delicious. You found them. I found them. Oh, you found the big pack. We never actually so had how the much, big pack. So how much are the big packs? Okay, well, we Everything in Sri Lanka has the price written on by the, the maximum rec recommended retail price written on the packaging, and the retailers are not allowed to sell above that, which is really useful to know. 200. 200 for the big pack, and I think it's 80 rupees for the small pack that Michelle and I occasionally, occasionally, not very often, buy all the different teas. Now, you can't be in a better country, Ceylon tea, best tea in the world, absolutely. So they've got a, a little sitting out area here and there's a baker in the back, he's making all the fresh buns and rolls. You know, I always love to see somebody working with bread. The guy's just breaking the dough in two, rolling it out, getting the tension, popping on the side. It's perfect. So he's a proper baker. Thank you, Stuti man. Now there is one odd thing, I find this a bit strange in Sri Lanka, is that that plate of buns there was out on the table just a minute ago with a group of people and they'll eat what they want and put back what they don't. That I find a little bit strange. So let's look at the menu here, give you an idea, these are rupee prices, local rupee. Um, let's have a look at something I'm familiar with. So a kotu. A vegetable kotu, 350 regular for a, a decent portion of kotu, egg, fish, chicken. Uh, the most expensive one here is uh, cheese kotu and I think the creamy chicken kotu. So we're about 150 meters now up this high street. It's loads of uh, Western style bars, big bars actually. And then on this side, a lot more smaller retailers. More local produce, I would say. Even the souvenir shops are a lot smaller. Uh, these short eats and these rotis, egg rotis, they're about, about 100 rupees, which is a tiny bit more expensive than it would be in Colombo, but uh, Ella is expensive, I think. But as I say, we're about 150 meters up and it's pretty much coming to the end. I don't know if this is the whole of, the whole of Ella. Do you think it is, Michelle? Um, yeah, it's just the main, the main high street. There are attractions outside of the center. Yeah, this is it. This is it, yeah. So, and it's, it's really good in the evening. It's kind of thumping, there's lots going on. Um, during the, the recent curfews, I don't think Ella's been affected and I don't even think they've been affected by the power cuts. How much is the massage? How much are the massage? Oh, you have the prices here. Yes, so herbal massages. Yes, normally 5,000, you pay 3,000. Ah, uh, okay. One person. Three pay, two person, 6,000. Okay, so let me just make a note. So this is the price of the massages here in Ella, ranging from 2,500 to about 5,000. Okay, so this is the, the treatment center. 
Yeah, thank you. That's reminded me, I almost forgot, the most famous thing about Ella is actually the train journey between Candy and Ella. Or no, Norelia. Norelia and Ella, the, the train journey, or is it the whole way from... from most people do it from Candy to Ella. That's, that is the... the okay. And apparently it's one of the most beautiful, one of the most scenic um, train journeys in Sri Lanka. Now, we have the tuk-tuk, so we're not going to be... <laughs> we're going to be driving that route, and I believe even driving it is really beautiful. So we got the choice, either we take the train and arrange for somebody to drive the tuk-tuk for us. I would kind of regret not driving it. Everybody does the train, so we're going to drive that route. And hopefully it won't rain, so we'll get to see it a little bit different we'll, to what, when we arrived. Because yeah. that was beautiful, but it was so wet and misty. Visibility about 10 feet. Yeah, Michelle's reminded me, I'd, I'd almost forgot when we set off walking today that it really is about the train journey to Ella and why it's become such a popular place. Iman's tattoo and piercing parlour. You know it's not local when that sort of stuff is all over the place. I mean, you wouldn't want to turn this side of the street. I like to keep things pretty honest, so if you turn this side of the street, it's a whole different story. But um, let's see if we can walk up to the train station. They'll bark a little bit. But look, these two, now we're closer, they've quietened down. Hello. Got to be a bit wary. Oh. Oh, yeah. You okay? Yeah, I know. Uh, it can be heartbreaking sometimes when you see the dogs and you think, oh, what can you do for these dogs? But it's a little bit like the beggars in the street in Colombo. You'll get a dog like that every 10 or 15 feet or so. So there is nothing you can do. You can't, you can't adopt or take care of every single dog you meet. Otherwise you'd have, by the time you left Sri, Sri Lanka, you'd have two or 3,000 dogs. So here is the famous Ella railway station. I say it's famous, I'm, I, it could not be. I think it would be. Okay, this is nice. Oh yeah, this is pretty. Ella Station. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't think, looking at these tracks, that trains run along, along here. But definitely Ella is one of the most beautiful uh, train journeys in Sri Lanka. I've seen a lot of videos. It's a shame Michelle and I don't have the opportunity this time to travel on this section, but we did do the Candy to uh, Colombo trip, which I think was beautiful in itself. So if the other one is, is better, we'll do it next time. Are you waiting for the train? Yeah, we're getting a train. <laughs> we're not getting a train. So the, uh, the station master's locked us in. We've got to go out a different way. A little bit strange though. The gate was open when we walked through and then he locked it. What's that about? I thought about that. You know, we, we walked into the station just to take a picture. We were on here for 30 seconds and somebody locked the gate. Now there is another way out. You've got to come down to the end of the station and out. But it's little things like that. that the difference between, you know, good service and bad service. Why the station master would lock the gate while there were four or five people on the station, just, just come through and say, I'm closing the gate. Why would you do that? I'm thinking that's about it, Michelle. <laughs> Maybe it's the journey to Ella. Maybe. It's the attraction. <laughs> yeah. I hate um, not being able to show anything more than sort of bars and tourist attractions, but if that's all that's here, that's, that's all that's here. There's some beautiful scenery coming up here, but you get all that in Candy and more. Candy's got a lot more well, to Candy's, offer. Candy's got a bit of a centre, you know, where the locals live. I think this is just for tourists. Yeah. But maybe there's a part of Ella that we haven't found. So I just had a little chat with one of the drivers here just to ask what's to see. I said, you know, what do people come here? One of them is uh, Ella Rock, which is the, the rock in the background. I think we drove up that rock. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> so we've seen that. There's a nine arch bridge, which, the, which would be really nice if you can catch it. It's uh, like a viaduct bridge. 
that the train goes over and there's a, a couple of waterfalls. I think that's the main thing. It is beautiful. It is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It's well worth um, a trip to come up here 100%. But I think if you were to do three or four days here, you might get a little bit bored. So we've come into, uh, I think it's called The Chill or Chill here. Chill Just for a drink and a, and a chill, basically. That looks beautiful. So that's the butterfly butterfly pea and coconut milk. So this is Vidal, our host. Hi. Hello, man. He's a nice guy, lovely guy. Actually, all the staff in here are nice. So that's with milk, Michelle. Nice. Nice, that's a butterfly pea with lemongrass and coconut milk. Wow. So this is mango chutney. Mango Sweet chutney. And ginger flavor. Papadam crispy. Papadams. Coconut sambal. Okie dokie. That looks nice. Thank you, man. Thank you, Vidal. Stuti. <laughs> so it's got this really rich um, purple. It looks almost like a, a caramelized onion. Let me have a little try. I can't quite see what that is. Mm. A little turmeric rice. Yep, it's caramelized onions. They've definitely done that for Western palate because it's not too hot. I'm not sure what this is here on my plate. Michelle and I, we think it looks like fish. However, I didn't see fish on the menu. Hmm. No, it's not fish. It's not chicken, I don't think. It's, it's almost like a tofu. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. It's not fish and it's not chicken, is it? It's not fish, it's not chicken. Maybe it's a tofu. They do a vegan version of this, so it could be a tofu, but it's a little, um, it's taking up all the flavors of the sauce. I just got a little crack of uh, cardamom. It's a, it's a mystery. Some things in life are meant to be mysteries. Mm -hmm. You guess, and your guess is as good as mine. Last thing I'm going to film on behalf of you guys, but Michelle and I just want to sit and chill. I feel like you're in my pocket with me, you viewers. But this is a papadam with the with the mango chutney and the beautiful coconut sambal. Oh, delicious! Oh, that mango chutney. Got to be my all-time favorite chutney and mango chutney and that's a really nice one not a lot of heat but enough heat to give you that Sri Lankan flavor do you think Michelle no it's really good as you say it's not over spicy but it's spicy enough to give you that flavor that you want but sometimes they've been a bit sort of oh, this is really nice okay clear off let us eat okay I brought you back for a reason I was just asking the staff here what was that um, which we thought was maybe fish or a meat of some sort and he said it's well this was uh oh lord so i've got my brakes on i'm in first gear the hill's about 45 degrees of just broken tarmac and wet slippery roads do not trust google 100 percent do not trust google